Okay, I am going to just quickly do a screencast to show you this um, activity, which we did in class, but it's something that tripped some people up on the test, so we're going to look at it again. So I'm just going to follow the instructions, click and drag the plunger, see what happens to the number of gas molecules, the volume of the gas, and the motion of the gas molecules. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it down, and I want you to just look at what happens, does the number of gas molecules change? What do you think happens to the pressure of the gas molecules? And what about the motion of the gas molecules? How does that change? And if we let go, then you can see it returns to normal. Okay, so we're going to show pressure gauges so that you can see. Here we show the air pressure outside the syringe and the air pressure inside the syringe. And you can see when we start, they're about the same. As we drag down, you'll notice the air pressure outside the syringe does not change, but look what's happening to the air pressure inside the syringe. I want you to think about why that's happening and think about it like an elevator where you're trying to fit people in. If you have an elevator that's this size, then it's no problem to have that many people on your elevator. But if you have an elevator this size, it's not as easy to get all of those people on your elevator. So when you're asked to show the difference in the motion of the molecules or the difference in the molecules, you need to think about this simulation. I hope that's helpful. Um, I'll quickly just show you the surrounding air. So you can see the molecules are moving at about the same speed inside and outside of the syringe. But if we push the plunger down, as we go down, the molecules just have a lot less space, so they're just not moving as much as the molecules on the outside. I hope that's helpful in understanding the movement of the molecules in compressed air.